Blender has a lot of amazing features and trust me, I love them all. However, lately I, I found myself using one feature very often and this feature is called drivers. And if you're new to Blender, you can think of drivers as expressions and after effects. And here's what I mean by that. So essentially you can control a single property instead of like setting keyframes, you can control it with a line of code. And in Blender, we call it drivers and uh, after effects, we call them expressions. So it's very simple. So let me show you a practical example. For example, I have this DVD case and maybe I want to animate this rotation here. I want to create like a slide rotation, like a consistent rotation. And I want to do that using code instead of keyframes. So it's very simple. We're going to create a driver for this property. Just right click here and click on add driver or use control D shortcuts. So you can just hover over this, press control D. It's the same thing. Then you'll have this panel here. And by the way, when you hover away from it, it will disappear. And to get it back, you can right click and click on edit driver again and it'll show up and then disappears again. But what I like to do instead of playing that game, I just right click here and go to open drivers editor. And this time we'll have the same panel but it's here to stay because you literally have to get rid of it by getting rid of it yourself. So we have the same driver panel in here. You can actually expand this, but let me kind of quickly show you what it does. So we have uh, two things we have to worry about really. We have the expression, so it's a line of code. This is where you would type your code. And then it's only one line of code. So if you want to declare any variables, you need to do this underneath here. And to do that, you would click on add input variable and you would call your variable. You would, you know, uh, like, pull any data from your scene here, like go to the case here and like uh, any like Z rotation and it would give you this value. And then you would, you know, whatever variable you call this, you can use this variable in your expression and you can have as many variables as you want. So again, you create your variables underneath here, like kind of visually, and you can reference any properties from, from your scene and then you can plug them in into your expression. That's a quick explanation, but it's, it's very similar to expressions and after effects. But instead of declaring variables, uh, above your expression, you do you do it in here. So I know it's a little confusing, but for the most part, it makes sense. All right, let me get rid of this variable real quick, and uh, let me do this. So um, here's what I want to do. I want to drive uh, this, the rotation, right? I want to have the continuous rotation. And normally in After Effects, I would just reference the time indicator. And, and here we call it like a frame indicator. And when it's not animating, it's a static value, but when it is animating, it becomes animated value and essentially becomes like a motor that you can use in your expression to drive things. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. By the way, instead of going back to the uh, the editor here and doing things in here, I can also, once I already set everything up, I can just click here and I can keep typing my expression. So in here, we're going to do this. We're going to type a keyword called frame. And a frame basically references this frame value. Now, if I go to 50, notice it doesn't give me 50 it gives me a weird big value. And the reason why, because we are in degrees. So we have to tell it uh, that this value is in radians. So we're gonna type radians, okay? And once you do that, you'll see we have 50, it'll show you 50. If you go to 60, it'll show you 60. But the cool thing about this, again, it's an animated value. So when you play it, it'll give you a nice rotation and it will play it continuously. Now you can build up on that, you can speed it up. Maybe you can say, hey, we're gonna say times, uh, let's do something like six, and then it's gonna go big time. Okay, then you can also do this. You can um, put this in parentheses, and uh, then you can say uh, sign, right? And you can go back and forth here like this. You can uh, kind of speed this up, maybe say eight, it's gonna go faster. You can increase how far it goes by going outside of your parentheses. And you can say times two, so it's gonna go further, there you go. So anyway, you can do all kinds of stuff. I just wanna show you, you can do some math in here, very similar to expressions in After Effects, and it's very useful. So that's one thing, but let's talk about variables. I know I kind of touched on that, but let's kind of expand on that. So we're gonna create a new variable or a new driver, right click, add new driver, and we're gonna to go to uh, open drivers editor and in here I'm going to start fresh. So we have this expression. Let's delete this. We're going to create a new variable and uh, This time let's do this. So when I move on the X location of my DVD case I want for the X location to influence my rotation. So let's do that. So I'm going to create a new variable So I already have a new variable. We're going to reference transform channel and we're going to find this DVD case object 
we're going to say DVD case. And then we want the X location, type X location. There you go. So, I mean, it's all in here. So just like that, if I move on this, if I update this, well, make sure X location. Oh, and we're going to call, we're going to create a variable. We're going to say X position. That's what I'm going to call this. And I'm going to call it up here. But remember, we have to do the whole radiance thing because we are in degrees here. So we're going to say radiance. And we're going to update this. And just like that, as you can see, this value is 0.37. And that's exactly what we get here. So you can have as many variables as you want. You can do all that jazz. But I'm going to click away for right now. So we only have one variable. It is in our expression. So now when I move in this, uh, we do have slight rotation. But we can do some basic math. We can increase that rotation by, let's say, 50. And so now when I move on this, yeah, it definitely gives us something really interesting. As you can see, this comes in very handy. And you can do this all over the place on all kinds of stuff. Lights, camera. I mean, it's the sky is the limit where you can do with this. I'm definitely just scratching the surface. So now let's talk about sliders. Like in After Effects, when you create expressions, you want to create like custom sliders, uh, custom properties that you can animate and then use those properties and other expressions to drive multiple properties. So let's do that here. Let's do this. So here's what I want to do. I want to create a slider. And when I move on that slider, I want for that slider to animate the rotation. So I want it to go from like negative 180. So let's type negative 180. And then I want for it to go to like 45 or 35. So basically 35 and negative 180 like this. So negative 180 to 35. But I want for this property to be driven by another property. So we're going to create a custom property. So in other words, we're going to create a slider. That's what we call an After Effects. And to do that is very simple. So I'm going to go to this object. I'm going to create it in there. We're going to go to Properties. And right here, we have Custom Properties. This is where you would create your custom sliders. So in here, we're going to create a new slider. And uh, we're going to click on this Settings icon. And we're going to set the type to Float, but you have more options in here. And uh, then property name, we're going to call this one animation. So this is going to be our animation. It's going to be our motor that's going to drive all the other properties. And then default value is 1, so minimum and maximum. So it's going to go between 0 and 1. And uh, that's really it. You can type the description. You can do more jazz in here. But I'm going to leave it as, as that. And just like that, we have a custom slider. It doesn't do anything, but we're going to animate this. So we're going to take our time indicator to frame 0. We're going to set this to 0, press I to set a keyframe. And then we're going to go to, let's go to something like 60. We're going to take this to 1, press I to set a keyframe. And just like that, we have an animated value. But obviously, it's not doing anything. But we can plug it in into other properties. So here's what I want to do. Again, we're going to go to this rotation. I'm going to say, hey, when it is 0, I want for the rotation to be set at negative 180. And when it is 1, I want for it to be 35. So basically, this thing will be mapped to that and it's going to animate it. Now, the only problem with that, you have to do some math. In After Effects, we had a method called linear. And we would just type things in. It would do magic for us. But here, we actually have to do some math. So we're going to do a formula that I'm going to copy and paste in here. But you guys can copy it from the description of this video. So we'll get to it here in a second. So the first thing we need to do, so we have a slider created. It is animated. So we're going to go to the Z rotation and we're going to add a driver. And we're going to go into driver's editor. So we have this in here. So I'm going to expand this because we're going to need as much of this as possible. So something like that is good. So now I'm going to create a variable. So I'm going to start from scratch. So we're going to create a variable. We're going to point to this slider. So we want to uh, create a variable that references this. So we're going to reference a single property. OK, we're going to call this variable animation, so nm. And then property, obviously, it lives in the DVD case. So we're going to say, let's search for DVD case. And then we need to copy the path to it. And to do that, it's very simple. So just hop over this property, right click, and copy data path. And when you copy it, you can paste it in here. So just like that, it's pasted in here. So now, as you can see, if I go over, let's, let's hit play just to maybe stop right here. And if I update this, you can see that's the value that we have here. So it is connected. So this variable is this property. So that's, that's awesome. So we can use this variable in our expression. So, But I'm going to copy the uh, formula first. And again, make sure you copy it from the description of this video. And I'm going to paste it in here. So let me kind of walk you through it. 
So we're mapping uh, basically animation value from zero to one to negative 180 to 35. So basically we're mapping those two. And all you need to do, so the first portion here has to do with the animation property. And then the second one, we're mapping it to rotation. So we're going to, we already have animation set. So it's a variable, it's the animation that we're using. And it goes between zero and one. So the minimum value is zero. So we're gonna replace start minimum to zero and maximum to one. And minimum, again, let's set, set that to zero. So we've set this up basically for the animation. And then we're gonna map it to uh, negative uh, 180 to 35. So the minimum value is negative 180. And I'm just going to type negative 180. I know we have two negatives. It will be, essentially becomes positive, but just visually it makes sense for me. I just, I, I'm going to leave it as that, but you can, you know, replace this for a positive. So negative 180 and then uh, the, uh, so that's the minimum. And we're going to do the same thing, negative 180. And then for the maximum, it's the last so when it's zero, I want it to be negative 180. When it's one, I want it to be 35. So that's what's going to be 35. Now, I know it's a lot. And then remember, make sure you put these in parentheses and uh, make sure you say radiance in front of it like this. So that's good. Once you've done this, you update this. And now it should work like a charm. So we're going to go to the beginning here. As you can see, at frame zero, it's negative 180. And at 60, right with the, where the animation ends, it, it's one now, right? it is 35 so that works now we can copy this driver we can say copy driver and we can go to the camera and we can animate the y so for example at zero maybe i want to zoom in to something like four three negative 4.3 right that's going to be my starting point and then at 60 when it arrives to the last keyframe i want to go back to negative nine so we're going to use the same driver so we're going to paste it in here and we're going to go to the editor here and we're going to expand this. We're going to just kind of uh, just adjust some things. We're, first of all, we're going to get rid of radiance because we're not dealing with degrees anymore. And uh, so we're not going to work with that because we're already we're using the same animation driver, right? We have uh, animation between zero and one. So we're not going to deal with this. But in here, instead of 35, we want to arrive at negative nine. So we're going to say negative nine and uh, make sure I did that, this right. Yeah negative nine and then right here instead of 180 we're going to say 4.3 so that's the starting point remember 4.3 negative 4.3 and just like that i can update this and let's see what this looks like and as you can see boom it's working quite well so now instead of adjusting like single curves for like a position rotation this time we just need to adjust a uh, simple animation this property right here so i can go to this animation here and uh, I can adjust it in here. So maybe I can go to frame 20, insert a keyframe, press I, so something like this. I can move this, press G, Y, move on this real quick. We can adjust this. Maybe I want for it to have like a more of a smooth arrival here. So I can select this and kind of have more of a smooth arrival. So let's see what this looks like. So yeah, you can definitely adjust this all day long and create something interesting and again, it automatically applies the same animation to rotation and position, which gives you a, a more of a smooth result. And it definitely matches up. It doesn't have like inconsistencies. You don't have to match up two curves to each other. And I find it extremely useful. And I know I covered a lot, I threw a lot at you, but it's very basic stuff. And I think um, if you're familiar with expressions, this will definitely click with you. And if you follow this channel, you know that I'm very passionate about expressions and After Effects, which is very similar to what you see here. So that's all I have for today. I know I kind of threw a lot at you, but hopefully you found this useful. Hopefully you'll be able to pick up from here and do some crazy magic from, uh, from here on. But thank you for your time. Thank you for watching this video. But in the meantime, my name is Sergey Praknevsky, and this is ukramedia.com.